salad bar chicken on the griddle. I know it's a funny name, but with prices sky high, I think we've got a shortcut for you. You gotta stay tuned. So this is the deal. Everybody knows right now we're pitching pennies, prices are sky high, food prices are out of control. I've actually been wanting to do this video for a while. My wife kept saying, no, nobody really wants to see it. Nobody really wants to see it. And I was thinking, why not? It's a great way to save money. As you can see in the photo, if you just buy one of these items, it could be $6.99, $2.99, $4.99, something like that. So I thought to myself, why not take advantage of the stuff that's given to us? How often do we pass up opportunities in the grocery store? So look what we got. I went to my local store down the street and I just got a plethora. <laughs> I use that word again. I love when I come up with new words or use new words of assortment things from the salad bar. Now this is automatically going to kind of push you in the direction of like a Mediterranean because of things they offer. So look what we got. We got those sweet hot peppers, pepperoncinis, garlic uh, marinated mushrooms, sun-dried tomatoes, some roasted garlic, some Kalamata olives. Now this is the deal. If you bought all this stuff, you're probably bare bones, 15 plus dollars, okay? The salad bar that we bought this from was $7.99 a pound. We bought, this was half a pound. And I was thinking for, actually our total was $3.51 to be exact. So I was thinking, man, $3.51 is less than one jar of anything you can get. Granted, you don't have a lot of leftovers. And what we tried to do when we put it in this was think about it, like portion it out, like what would go on a chicken. So this is the idea. We're gonna create incredible tomato sauce with butter, lemon, and chop all those up. We're gonna cut our chicken breast, season with our Cavender's Greek seasoning, and we bring a new toy to the party, some broccolini. We don't have it often, and I thought it'd be a, just another way to throw something on the griddle that you guys haven't seen. That's healthy. Your wife has been begging for something healthy. That's true. You guys ready? Yep. Let's go. First things first, Whenever I put chicken on the griddle, I always cut it. I try to make my chicken even and not as fat because you're worried about that sear, but you don't want to overcook the chicken on the fat parts and the little parts. So basically what I do, I just take the chicken and just go right down the middle. Do you have to do this? No, but it just makes it so much more even. I think it's more flavorful too because then there's more surface area for your seasoning. Huh? That's why they call you microwave queen. <laughs> all right our chicken's been cut in half i'm just going to use some of the good pieces the rest of the pieces i'm going to season up for my daughters um i get asked this question a lot why or how do you determine what griddle to cook on and there's really two answers one because there's a certain theme in mind right i think one griddle might be better than the other just based on what i'm cooking at the time and to be brutally honest the number one reason probably or the second reason number one reason laziness i move my griddles around a lot so if it's already on the deck and i know i'm going to use it i'll might as well just use it again people say well you don't cook on your camp chef that much well there's not that much difference between the camp chef and the blackstone the blackstone's newer so it's more like a toy so i use it more often so i can get more accustomed to it so plus the camp chef has a nice little home over there parked and uh it fits in that little alcove nice and neat it's a little bit harder to move so on and so forth there's your answer Season both sides. I just washed my hands, relax. I know it's not in the video. I didn't think you need to see it. Just chill out, both of you. All right, just a little bit of avocado oil. I guess you can imagine by now what temperature I have my griddle set on. Low. All we're doing is look for a nice, even temperature. And that's what we're gonna get right here. While that's cooking, we're gonna chop up our sauce, our vegetables for the sauce. I'm just gonna cut these tomatoes in half. This is gonna help the juices make a sauce when the tomatoes burst. All right, the sun-dried tomatoes, if you're not familiar with them, they're a little bit tricky to cut. They are gummy. I'm just gonna pull those out, set those to the side. I'm gonna cut my pepperoncinis. I will just cut it all, because there's garlic in there too.
All right, for the broccolini, just a little bit of oil. I'm gonna finish it with butter, lemon, and salt and pepper. But right now, we're just working on this right here. Add a little lemon. That steam's gonna help, that butter's gonna melt, and you're basically just cooking it until you like it. You like it crispy or crunchy, not cooked all the way, that's up to you. So this is what I did. I try to teach you guys something all the time. I'm gonna try two ideas in one. You ready? I'm gonna go ahead and cut the flat top off. The chicken is not cooked all the way through. I'm hovering around about 150-ish. If you notice, the fat part of the meat typically is on the hotter part of the griddle. My griddle runs hot through here and it gets cooler as it goes to the side. So I'll place the outside of the meat closer to the hottest part. It'll eliminate some of the cooking unevenness on the inside. There's so much carryover temperature that you don't have to worry about keeping it hot the whole time. That's one. The second one is, you see all this food right here? This is fawn. This is seasoning. This is the crust. This is what you want. I'm going to make the sauce in that, and that's what we're going to do right now. I don't think you said. This is actually the thickest side. The thickest side is over here, which is the hottest side because it faces the hot part of the griddle. This is the thinnest side, which this is the cooler part of the griddle. Okay. We've got all this food left over right here. I'm just trying to eyeball it. Remember, my griddle's off. Add the tomatoes. Come back with a little pepper. I don't think it's going to need salt because of the brininess. All this was probably that bronze stuff. I'm looking for that tip and the butter to really open these tomatoes. I'm gonna show you what happens real quick. Take that sauce, all that food bit, scrape it up in your butter and tomatoes. That's flavor. Once they start cooking, Go ahead and smash them down. See how much sauce we're getting? See that? Mm -hmm. That's going to help carry the flavor. Ooh. Can I get you? <laughs> I was worried about that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's what I'm looking for right there. That's it right there. Artichoke hearts are a great uh, thing to add. They had pickled okra, they had pickled, um, I can't say the name, uh, jardinere. That's even close. I think that's right, actually. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I think we got a winner. All right, guys, after it's done, just go and top it with some feta cheese. Obviously, anything in here is optional. It just gives you an idea. Tons of flavor. You can feed an army quick and easy. I don't know how long it actually took, but if I was not filming, extremely fast. Like 10 minutes, probably. Less. Oh, uh, yeah, probably 15 minutes, honestly. With chocolate. Cutting the chicken and stuff like that. So you can preheat your griddle. You know, talking about time things. Preheat your griddle while you're prepping. It just all flows right in one. So... Well, if it tastes as good as it looks, 
I think we got a winner. Try that broccolini. There's nothing different to really broccoli, it's just a little bit softer. Great flavor. Lemon through there. I like the touch of lemon. See how moist that chicken is? Just running all the way down through there. Just setting it over off the heat. Continue to cook, letting it rest. You get those spicy peppers, the banana peppers, the tomatoes, the garlic. Mm. You wait. <laughs> I told you. Why do mm. I have to wait? Give me a bite. Mm. I'm glad we did it. I know you've been wanting. Oh to man, this the sun-dried tomatoes. The sun-dried tomatoes are good. Kind of like pick your poison on like what vegetables you want. Tell them, don't be shy. Mm. You always say that I don't ever tell them enough. Okay, it's good. <laughs> it is good. Mm -hmm. Cheap. It's super the good. whole edible, 351. Mm -hmm. Press the tomatoes. They were on sale. For 250 cheap. for the whole thing, so what? We used half of it? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, that's super good. Mm. Mm. There you go, guys. Just another simple, healthy, um, cost effective, user friendly, you name it. I think it's a great, it, I mean, it is so much flavor. It just packs with flavor. And that's what it's all about. Hey, find us on Facebook at The Griddle Group. Tag us, make something. Let's see what you guys are making out there. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you for all the brand new subscribers. Can't do it without you. Peace. It is so good. Mm. It's so good.